It's too early, too early in the morning for Radio 4. It's the Today Program. Oh God, it's early in the morning. It's too early in the morning for this. It's 6 o'clock on Wednesday the 7th of August. Good morning, this is Today with Evan Davis and James Hunt. The headlines this morning. I should be getting up now. I know I should be farming. The weather out there isn't so charming. Welcome to Radio 4 and the Today programme. It's six in the morning. Congratulations if you're one of the few listeners that starts listening to this programme this early. And you might even be one of the very few listeners that seeks this program out on the iPlayer and listens diligently from the 6am mark, in which case I think you are due a double congratulations from all of us and the team here at the Today programme. We have to go to bed at 8 o'clock the previous evening. Our life is very hard, despite some of the stories that we feature that talk about how hard life is these days for all of us, and it is very, very hard. It isn't actually harder for any other UK citizen than it is for a member of the Today programme team. We get up at three o'clock in the morning, we take taxis with BBC expenses, and we all pile ourselves into the studios at just after five o'clock where we begin to prep this programme. Isn't that amazing? Well, one of those darn cotton-picking stories is coming in right now. We'd better get on with it. That's why we're here. That's why you're here. And it concerns something that I know that you, as a loyal listener to the Today programme, will absolutely hate, as do all of us. It is the Sun newspaper, and thankfully, in just one town of this septed isle of Great Britain, the newspaper is about to be banned. Here's the story. In the highly posh town of Royal Walton Bassett, an ordinance has been passed by council officials that bans outdoor reading and public reading of the tabloid newspaper The Sun. It is believed that it will lower the tone of the area and could even have a negative effect on property prices if a prospective yuppie was to be seen coming through the streets looking at people reading the controversial newspaper that is usually associated with lower classes and people of a worse ilk, the town mayor has said. Any fans of the Sun newspaper that do exist within the town will now be forced to read the paper inside and only in private. A small but dedicated group of people who are fans of the paper have said that they will be opposing the new ordinance. They will defiantly buy the Sun from a newsagent based outside of town and will read it in a mass protest... Of course, mass actually just means four people to be held in the town square of Royal Walton Bassett to a disinterested crowd of maybe 20 people. It's no minutes past six. Welcome to the Today programme on Friday. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what we're going to do with the next three hours because nothing has happened whatsoever in the news. Everything is exactly the same as it was yesterday. Hence, there is no news, there is nothing to report on, and there's, most importantly, no further developments. So unless some news is created within the scope of the programme whilst we're on air today, then unfortunately, I'm going to have to sit here like a lame duck, and you might, at your end, listening to Radio 4, on whatever you listen to Radio 4 on, you'll probably have to listen to Dead Air. In fact, I recommend that you tune over to one of the BBC's rival radio stations. Radio 2 has got some light popular music on, whilst we usually do hardcore current affairs. Radio 1 is usually about something silly. Our types here would never listen to Radio 1, so we don't know what the hell Radio 1 is all about. We just know that it exists at all. Or you could go over to Radio 3 and listen to some classical music. Alternatively, you could even be shocking and listen to commercial radio and adverts about double-glazed salesmen 
and products that you're never going to buy, and that's why commercial radio is in such a sad state. I got nothing. 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 Um, news. No news whatsoever. Um, nothing for it. Just going to have to make something up. You're listening to the Today programme on Radio 4. It's just coming up to six minutes past six, which is still six minutes later than when we started, but it is still considered by most people in the country to be ridiculously early. Or so, clocks tell us. A survey has been commissioned by the National Sensible Time Consortium, and it has revealed to us at Radio 4 that our programme, the Today programme, which is the programme that you're listening to today, if you're up with us early at just after six o'clock, is on far too early for the vast majority of citizens in our United Kingdom. Are you one of those citizens? Are you concerned that you're being made to listen to radio incredibly early in the morning? But it's probably because you're not being made to listen to radio early in the morning, but rather that your job or lifestyle, as has been revealed also by the Sensible Time Consortium, has made it so that you have to tune into these programmes incredibly early because if you don't get this and a strong coffee to get you going in the morning, you'll just be dead on your feet. And you wouldn't be much good to society like that, now would you? (laughs) Well, some of us out there want to drop out of society and they make interesting stories even for this programme. A man in West Bromwich has revealed to his local paper that he's making a stand against clothes. Having worn clothes all of his life, he says that he is now bored and disillusioned with the concept of clothing, and to avoid having to buy new clothes in future, he will simply stop wearing them at all. You might think that that story was unusual, but in fact, that man is far from alone. Over in the East Midlands in Nottingham, a man has adopted the same approach to food, which he also finds boring and disillusioning. As a result, he has said that from the 1st of June, he is going to simply avoid eating all foods altogether. The Nottingham shaman, Mark Grievance, who is behind the Anti-Foods Alliance, has told the world in the form of a press conference that he thinks he can survive by eating nothing but water, which, as many of you know, is not considered by most people to be food at all. As a result, he will avoid food but not, not avoid death. And we wouldn't call ourselves the Today Programme if we wouldn't allow you any feedback on the news items that we feature. And on this issue of the early starts, we've had an opinion from West Yorkshire. Why not start at 5am, or even 4am, or even 3am, or even 2am? Where's it going to end? If the Today Programme gets any earlier, I'll be listening to it before I go to bed which is a very good point because the DWP says that many benefit claimants stay up throughout the night. And as a result, the Today programme isn't nighttime listening. Well, it is. That's the point. And the time is just coming up to... Actually, I've just lost my display. My Windows XP display has just crashed. The only numbers that I can see on the screen is a random error message. And so... I will just bring you the next news item as soon as I have pressed the reset button and been forced to wait 10 minutes for the PC to boot up. What with all the bloatware and things that I've been installing on it, which I've been given a discipline about by the BBC Radio 4 Today programme controller. I apologise for this wait. Even though this is the BBC, it is in fact a PC from over 10 years ago that we're being forced to use. Just waiting... There's the startup screen now. It's stuck on the hourglass. I haven't got enough imagination to think of anything else to talk about without my auto cue. In fact, for the first time ever in the today's programme history, let's put on some music. What music? Radio 4 hasn't got any. The only music programme on Radio 4 is Desert Island Discs. As a result, I will be playing a piece from last week's Desert Island Discs, which is a classical piece by someone I think is called Mozart. Yeah, I've heard of them. 
let's put on Symphony No. 40 while I wait for this PC to bring you back your cherished morning news. Yep, I think that's just about enough of that. This is the Today Programme, and we're back in business, baby, as we've sorted out the PC by junking it and installing a new one instantly. It's got Windows 8 pre-installed, which literally means that this computer makes us the dog's bollocks. That music was absolutely lovely. It's a shame to have to go back to news, as that can be so depressing in the morning. Sometimes you wish that the world would just shut up and listen to some music. Well, it did for about three minutes on today's programme, so you should be grateful for that. Anyway, bicycle repairman in Norwich was disappointed to be told by police officers he passed on the street that his modified vehicle could be considered the equivalent of a car. and He should purchase motor insurance and also display a car tax badge, even though... He had built no windows onto his contraption. Mr Ian Slohan had modified a 1960s bicycle inside his workshop and fitted the old part of a shed onto the front of it and attached a motor from an old Peugeot 101 itself from the 1960s. The modified bicycle was then capable of reaching speeds of up to 41 miles an hour. Mr Ian Slohan was given six points on his licence, told to take the bicycle apart... And then, in a fit of irony, had to use the bicycle that he had dismantled to get himself to work, rather than his custom car. Mr Ian Slohum's barrister told the Today programme that when he began work on the contraption, he didn't conceive it as a car, but when he realised that through the fruit of his labours he had inadvertently created a car, he was absolutely delighted, as he could never afford a real car, and then continue to use it like a bicycle, hoping to avoid the car regulation rules. Unfortunately, as, as with most stories on the Today programme, you know the rest, after we have told you. We don't like to big ourselves up, but you wouldn't know anything about the news in the morning if it wasn't for the Today programme. Every other news programme just skims over the surface of the news, whilst we actually open it up like a parcel and delve into it. And do you think that it's merely a matter of reporting the news? Well, you can think again. For some items, we have made the news. On a slow news day, when nothing is happening, our reporters have been told to go out of the studio with their field recorders and make something happen. Those were the editor's words, not mine, but they are my words because I'm telling you now in the form of a news story on air. In real life, did you know that I talk like this even when I get home? This is my normal way of talking. It's not a newsy way of talking. For example, when I get in and I speak to my wife, I say to my wife, can I have a cup of tea? And what is for dinner? And what time can we watch Coronation Street? She will usually reply back to me, why are you talking like that again? You never did that when we were courting. If I had known that this is how our marriage was going to turn out, I would have never married you, let alone... Well, I can't repeat that bit because this is before the watershed on Radio 4, very early in the morning. It's the Today programme and it's just coming up 2.31 minutes past six. As I need to go to the toilet, I'm going to put on a pre-recorded news segment, a pre-packaged piece about the war that's happening somewhere in the world. We'll just choose a random war and put that item on. Today, we'll report the war on, and I'm just going to put on my random simulator. The random, very national lottery-like machine, it's a bit like Camelot, has chosen. We'll cover the war on Syria today. Tomorrow, it might be Iran. Is there enough toilet paper? That's a crisis that's affecting every toilet. As I wander in, wondering whether I'll be able to go, or whether I will have to hold... Come on, I need to go. Why are you making me feel like I need to piss, but I can't get anything out? Now, come on. This isn't a joke. 
Come on, come on. There's no one standing next to me. There's no reason to be nervous. Ah. Oh, there it is. It's like a leaky old tap. Always unreliable, but eventually you get something out of it. Oh, so sorry about that. Deep apologies. I know that there's going to be a Hutton inquiry about why I took a microphone in with me to the bathroom instead of playing something out on Radio 4. The regularity of which I am forced by my body to pass urine does not constitute as news, and as such I offer deep apologies. And now that I'm back on my comfy seat... We can get back to the business of entertaining you with as much serious news as is possible given the three hours that we have each day to do so. The time is now 6.15 and not even monks are up at a time as early as this. Okay, just looking for the news. In lieu of any real news, I've got a copy of the Manchester Evening News from yesterday evening. It has now made it into the programme, this particular item. It's quite fascinating. Well, have you got clutter around the house that you just want to get rid of? Many of us are hoarders, so you've got to feel sorry for the police in Greater Manchester who have built up a hugely desirable collection of articles that they've stolen from criminals and things found on the street. Greater Manchester Police have unveiled a controversial policy to rid themselves of the years and years of collected offensive articles which have been stored in lost property and have been confiscated from the area's criminals. They include offensive weaponry, such as knives, guns, illegal drugs, with a street value of over a million pounds, including heroin and cannabis and Tic Tacs. All these items and more have now completely filled up each police station in the Greater Manchester area, and the Chief Constable has decided to hold a cart boot sale at the back of the Hangover and Spit pub in Stockport on Sunday morning. It is feared many criminals will be able to buy their items back. But as the cart boot sale is being held so early in the morning, the Chief Constable has dismissed the notion, saying that the general public will get to peruse the items first. They are harmless and unlikely to do anything illegal or offensive with the items, and criminals just don't get up that early as they are not productive and decent members of society. So what's your views on this? Send an email, text, Facebook, Twitter, or even website about it now. It's the Today programme. The time is just coming up to a quarter to a quarter to eight. And so, with all this talk of police, I think it's time to up the ante a bit. There's nothing more thrilling in the world of crime than the tale of a bank robbery. And lucky residents in Kent got such a tale only yesterday. All the details that were previously unavailable have been made fully available because of the court, and they are enough to salivate over. A Ramsgate man robbed a bank two days before Christmas. He got away with the sum of 100 million, 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 million pounds. Bill Reed armed himself with a can of Coca-Cola and held up a security guard who was delivering cash and Coke cans to a NatWest bank in the town. But when he discovered that he had no cash, he picked up a can of Coke, marched the guard into the bank and threatened to pour the drink all over him unless he was given money. But well, Canterbury Crown Court heard that after snatching thousands of pounds in the bizarre heist, he ran into a nearby pet shop and used a stolen £500 to purchase a monkey, until police overpowered him. Now Reed of Presedge Avenue has been jailed for an uncountable amount of years after admitting robbery, attempting robbery, and having a can of Coca-Cola with criminal intent. Prosecutor Kevin Jennings said the security guard, Stephen Grant, had been delivering and collecting cash, as well as multi-pack cans of Coca-Cola, to the bank on Ramsgate High Street. He had been in and out of the bank several times, he said, with his locked armoured box containing cash and Coke. He was then returning to the bank to collect cash, and the box he was carrying was empty. It was then that Reed began shouting at him, 
Open the box. Open the box. If you don't, you will be all wet and sticky from this can of Coca-Cola. I am not joking. Mr. Grant then saw that Reed was holding a normal-sized red, unopened aluminium can with the words Coca-Cola on it, and he became extremely worried. The court heard that the armed can man then began swearing and demanding that the box be opened, pointing his can at the guard. Mr. Jennings added, It, the box, was empty, and when Reed discovered that, he became enraged, shouting at him. He then forced the guard inside the bank and shouted at the cashiers, Give me some effing money, or I will spray him with Coca-Cola. The prosecutor said that the terrified staff then handed over more than 58 billion million quillion billion pounds, and Reed, in his haste, spilled other cash as he ran away. Police officers arrived and were told that Reed had run into a nearby pet shop, where they found him purchasing a monkey, which he had bought with some of the stolen cash. As they approached him, he was seen to bend over to the side of him. Although they didn't know where the can was, they suspected that it might be there, and they overpowered him. The can was later found in his coat pocket, they said. He said that the weapon was a basic aluminium can, which had been violently shaken to the point where it could have taken out over half of Kent. We are lucky, the police officer said, that the situation didn't end up like that. Reed, who has previous convictions for robbery, including one at a post office, this incident involved a can of Pepsi, the court heard by Richard Skinner, his defending barrister. Reed says that this was a case of stupidity, desperation, and a series of wrong choices. They're what brought him to court. He is a 48-year-old man with mobility problems. He was out of trouble for 14 years before these offences. He had been spending his time simply as a heroin user, taking drugs which weren't against the law. But then he started to commit the robberies. Whilst he was committing a robbery, he met a woman he was robbing, who became the love of his life. She helped him kick his drugs habit. He became a productive member of the community, and then he had a business as an odd job man. Things went well, and in December, he wanted to thank his partner, and he proposed marriage. He said that Reeves had saved £5 million and, and then borrowed another £5 million from loan sharks, including Wonga.com, which he failed to pay back at, a, at an extortionate rate of 4,200% interest. He fell behind in his repayments when he developed an illness which had led him to lose a third of his body weight. He's now gaunt, withered, and a shadow of his former self. Those from whom he had borrowed came round to his half-bedroom flat, a Wonga agent killed his pet dinosaur in the style of the Wonga adverts, knocked his door down and caused him other serious problems, such as making a slight mark on the wall when he entered. That in turn caused him to steal some Dulux paint, in addition to his other offences, when he wanted to repair the wall. He didn't know who to turn to, and so he made the wrong choice to rob the bank. The time is a quarter past eight. It's, it's the Today programme, and uh, most people who are serious about contributing to the flailing economy in the UK have already got themselves out of bed. If that isn't you, you are, in fact, a disgrace. That is according to a survey carried out by me. And now it's time for some weather. Luckily, there is always some of that every day. So it's the one thing, even though there sometimes is absolutely no news whatsoever, that will always be featured in every single edition of the Today programme. There hasn't been much weather, though. Yes, I'm outside, um, Broadcasting House. Um, the only real weather here is the traffic. It hasn't been too exciting. Um, there's no rain forecast for today. In most parts of the United Kingdom, it will be slightly sunny, just but with a bit of cloud, and that is what we're seeing in most parts. There's no real disasters coming, for example. There aren't any uh, gale force winds. There's not going to be any snow because it's now April. Things might be boring in the UK, which is why it's such a good country to live in. But we have just had word from the Met Office that a severe weather warning is expected in Antarctica. Extreme gale force winds, a bitingly low temperature, and even a snowstorm is to be expected near the McMurdo Research Station, of which there is a population of six people. And so 
Although they're out of range of Radio 4, about the only part of the world that can't get it whatsoever because there's no internet connections, we're going to tell them through this programme to be bloody careful. And now it's that favourite slot in the morning. Now it's time to get your Bibles out, which should be quite easy to do if you've stayed in a travel lodge and are waking up to us there. You usually discover it when you're looking for the light in the bedside cabinet. It's time for Thought for the Day with Thomas Christian. I think he's a reverend, but I wasn't sure whether to put that at the beginning or not. My Thought for the Day. Hello and welcome, you heathens, to Thought for the Day. I'm religious. I reside in the beautiful parish of Thetford in Norfolk. In my converted one-bedroom flat, I have lovingly converted the back room into a makeshift church. And I have installed an echo chamber for the authentic effect. It really is most delightful. But enough about me and my life free of sin. I would like to impart to you some heavenly advice. Advice pertaining to the Ten Commandments. I found on a recent study of the Bible, which took me three weeks and three nights, that there is no need whatsoever for any of them at all, since it can be established through the passages in the Bible that through the Ten Commandments, every single activity known on this holy earth is banned, forbidden even. We can take the parchment so lovingly prescribed by Moses and the very word of God in all that relates to the Ten Commandments and simply scrap them. For there is but one, just one single, solitary commandment. And it is simple thus. It reads, Thou shalt not. So whatever it is you are thinking of doing, think whether it is in the Bible contained within, in the scriptures. Whether it be football, going to the cinema, roller skating, going on the internet, looking at your neighbour's face, stealing a five billion dollar fortune, or going to the moon, the chances are our Lord up there will have somewhat of a downer on it. And so, for your own good as a devoted Christian, Thou shalt not. It is no longer a moral code with more pages than the catalogue. It is simple enough for even you lot to understand. So the next time you want to do something, thou shalt not even think about doing it. I have spoken my peace, and therefore I myself am at peace. And therefore I believe that you listeners to the holy and Reverend Radio 4, are also at yours. And so I will leave you now, leave you to your solitude and to your blessings, with only one more further thing to part from my mouth. And so that's my thought for the day. Oh my God, I hope they liked it. This is my London traffic update. It's very, very simple. I'm going to try and recreate the cover on the Beatles' Abbey Road album, and the live results that I experience will form the traffic update. Right, I'm just crossing now. It's important that I don't look both ways because I want to see what sort of traffic we're experiencing. Well, um, we are finding... I'm crossing here! Why don't you make a delivery talk my ass? Oh, wait, you nearly did! Oh, so Amazon parcels are of vital importance now, are they? People ordering things, do they need them delivered on time? Anyway, to cut a long story short, the, all the roads in London, especially this one, Abbey Road, are incredibly busy at this time of day, so that if you do leave your house to go to work, which is usually vital, or, or else you could actually lose your job, and therefore the ability to travel and work in London, um, you're going to find it's exceptionally busy. Um, if I were you, I would just walk or take the tube, if you decide to drive in London, then you're actually madder than me, having walked out on Abbey Road and tried to recreate the Abbey Road album cover that the Beatles made so famous in the 60s. Now, that is mad, isn't it? But you'd be madder 
than that if you actually try to drive in London anywhere today. Just mark my words. The Radio 4 Today programme spoof was written by Astrid Jones, featuring stories written by Jack Bromby. For funny news articles.blogspot.co.uk and some additional stories by Asterix Jones. The programme was a good laugh production for Channel 107.